assalamu alaikum uh, welcome dear students of class 11th uh, i'm sheikh gulzar ahmed and today i'm with you and we'll be talking about or rather discussing one of the most important poems in class uh, 11th the poem is uh, personal helicon this poem is written by simas hini and this poem has been dedicated by simas hini to one of his best friends michael longley right so uh, dear students before we go to the poem and see how we can study it just a small a brief tip for you uh, a simple way if you want to know how to understand poetry right then the best line that you need to remember is that stop bad fit so i would love to explain what is stop bad fit right so this is all about poetry actually for example stop we begin with s stands for symbols that means in poetry you need to know symbols and t it stands for themes right so again your focus should be on themes when you are understanding comprehending a poem okay the next one o o is organization from the beginning to the end what's the organization of the poem you need to understand that then the development progression how the poem progresses from its beginning to the end okay then let's go to bad b stands for big 3 for example you need to understand what is which is the audience of the poem who is it talking to who is it interacting to who is it conveying its message to and then yes very important as a student of literature you need to understand in the very first outset who is the speaker in the poem right okay and then the third important thing is that you need to understand the situation for which situation is it happy is it sad what kind of environment is all around that you need to understand before operating on a poem right okay then we come to a yes atmosphere you need to understand comprehend the atmosphere that has been projected by the poet in a poem right then diction this is the clarity of words this is the choice of words that a poet makes that you need to see that you need to understand then f it stands for figurative language what is figurative language we all know i think from class 6 7 8 onwards you have been we as teachers are trying our level best to tell you what is a simile what is a metaphor what is assonance all that which helps you to understand the underlying meaning of a work of art poem right okay then yes very important another thing that's i i is imagery you need to understand what is imagery okay so pictures the created by words mental pictures and finally it's the tone right sometimes you see that a poem has some situation that sad it may, may be pessimistic optimistic right delightful happy feeling like that so that way you need to understand the tone of a poem so for any poem i give you this top secret whenever you want to study a poem you should focus on stop bad fit so this gives you a concise and compact understanding of where i need to understand the poem right so today let's come back come down to our topic of the day and try to see all these points where they actually stay in the poem right so dear students if we go to the introduction of this very poem so this poem was first published in 1966 in the book death of naturalist right uh, i said you in the very first outset even i have written it that this poem has been dedicated to one of uh, simas hini's friends mike longley okay so on this uh, simas hini is himself an irish poet okay so let us try to see first personal helicon what is this personal helicon right personal very simple i don't see any rocket science in this right personal that means my personal your personal so it is something personal nothing else but yes 
if something has the weight or meaning that is helicon. Okay. Now, what is helicon dear students? Helicon is the name of a mountain in Greek mythology, right? where nine muses live, where nine gods of music lived rather they live still there. This is a myth and that stands it is still there. Okay. Now, what happens there? This in this mountain, there are two streams flowing down from this very mountain. Okay, and it is believed that these two streams, anybody who drinks water from these very two streams, it's a myth, and it's believed that he gets inspired to write poetry. Okay, so that's it all about. But in this case, when uh, Hine, Simus Hine, uh, this uh, Simus Hine says that personal helicon, he doesn't get here in this very poem. Our poet, Irish poet Simus Hine, doesn't get any inspiration from the Greek mythology or the helicon that is in Greece. No, he doesn't get it from there. He has a very interesting fascination for wells, and he gets his fascination from locally from his own village, from his own country, from his own town, from the locale of his uh, uh, where he lives actually from his village. So, he gets inspired from the wells and it is because of those wells from his childhood to his uh, maturity that he comes along all the way uh, to a stage where he comes and starts writing poetry, but he gets the fascination, he gets the inspiration from the wells right. So, that is all about personal helicon. Then let me give you an overview introduction of the poem first and then we will recite the poem right. right? Okay. And dear students actually uh, this poem personal helicon, it describes the childhood memories of Simas Hine right. It describes his childhood memories, right, and then connects them to the present. So, from the childhood to the present, when he is a mature man, he is now grown up man, so he gets connected to the present, right. So, here in this very poem, you will see few things as a child the innocence of the child that this poet is fascinated by something like the uh, sumil of the water in wells, he enjoys. Uh, the grass, the herbs, the plants and the life in the wells, right. So, th that is the beginning. So, he is a kind of curious kind of person, he drags um, the branches of those plants in the water and tries to find out something, he is always in search of something, but this is how his childhood is all about. Then he moves on and ultimately in the last line, that is the most beautiful line I think that reflects all of us, I will come to that line and there at that very moment he says that now I have come of age and this is not the time that I should look into the wells and see what is there. No, now that, uh, that childhood, that age, that time that is gone, I have to be mature and write something big, write something great, write something that suits to my age and that suits to my personality. So, that is the last line is how this all describes a kind of if we see is it is a kind of autobiography by this very poet. So, let me recite the poem for you. Uh, dear students, okay. now uh, listen carefully, right, uh, the poses and all that I will try to maintain, right. I cannot be the native speaker, but I will try my level best to help you to recite this poem and you just uh, concentrate, keep silence and listen to every word, right. I hope that 50 percent of meaning will be clear to you if you uh, listen with uh, this comprehension. As a child they could not keep me from wells and old pumps with buckets and windlasses. I loved the dark drop, the trapped sky, the smells of water weed, fungus and dank moss. One in brickyard with a rotted board top, I savoured the rich crash when a bucket plumped it down at the end of a rope, at the end of a rope, so deep so deep you saw no reflection in it. A shallow one under a dry stone ditch fret fight like an aquarium, when you dragged out long roots from the soft mulch, a white face hovered over the bottom. Others heard, others heard, 
Others had echoes, gave back your own call with a clean new music in it. And one was scarcer for their out of ferns and tall foxgloves, a rat slapped across my reflection. Now, to pry in truths, to finger slime, to stare big eyed narcissus into some supreme is beneath all adult dignity. I rhyme, I see myself to set the darkness echoing. So, that is the poem, dear students, right? And we can comprehend this poem at two different levels denotative level and connotative level. Okay? So, let me rush through what is denotatively said in this very poem. Literal meaning, simple, and then I said ki we will come to figurative meaning at the same time, right? Let us go to the de uh, denotative meaning of the poem. And the students in Ireland, there are many wells with names of saints and poet. Uh, this po our poet was inspired by the wells. Okay? In his childhood, Henny played near the wells and watched the drawing of water with the help of bucket from wells. Wells as the way of personal reflection and understanding of natural world. That is how he understands definitely the world. He feels that wells are doorways to underground world. He sees his reflection. He sees the reflection of the sky in the well. And he is fascinated how is this sky trapped in a well, right? This is all the childhood thinking. And then when he becomes wiser, when he becomes older, he is now more thirsty of knowledge, of increased and advanced knowledge, right? Now, if you go to the connotative part of this very poem, what you will understand? Well is a symbol of life, okay? Here you can say that well is an extended metaphor, right? So, in inspiration and knowledge, the poet describes his childhood means he has many things to learn. Description of bucket and sound shows that things would be learned hardly. Drying up well shows that he has yet not seen anything. Mysteries of life, poet's own reflection from the well is like the Narcissus. The Greek mythology and the deep echo from the well is like echo in Greek legends where there was a maiden who loved Narcissus. But you know that Narcissus was in love with himself and the problem was that he could not find himself. He could not find himself as his own partner. And you know, it's famous that he uh, he committed suicide, and ultimately uh, a flower has grown on Helicon, which is now named after that. That's now called Narcissus. This is actually this very character. So, the bucket and the drawing of water shows that the family and traditions he cannot remove from his life. Searching water in the wells means poet wants to know who he really is. That means self-exploration. A rat. In one of the lines you, uh, you uh, just now read that a red jumps through his this uh, image in the water that reveals that he is somewhere disturbed through the process of his life he gets uh, disturbed and those disturbances those confusions those uh, things that are haunting his mind that come to surface in his poetry right so that is something uh, called connotative kind of explanation now. Another very important area I said that in uh, coming back to stop bad fit uh, area, you need to see there is a lot of imagery and let me tell you very honestly most of the times I have seen teachers think that this is a, one of the hard poems. If you read it very clearly and very closely, you will see that very simple adjectives have been used by the poet, very simple. Like I was reading the first line, old pumps, what is this? Is it something different? No. And you can see something like a dark drop. Yes. Some confusing thing is there that what is the drop? If the bucket drops down on the bottom of the well, there is darkness at the bottom. But this also tells us that it is the beginning of the poet's life also, maybe. He is not yet having some kind of concrete idea, if you connotatively try to understand this. That is why he finds his darkness. He is not able to figure out what is, what is happening around him. That is why there is there his darkness, right? So, later on you will see that he finds himself in these wells. That also has some connotative meaning that actually now he has started that self-evaluation, self-examination. He is exam examining himself, who I am actually. That is progression in life, right? So, uh, if we go to imagery, you will find that this poem is full of imagery. Uh, for example, 
you have wells, okay, very simple. You have water buckets, you have smell of water weeds, foxgloves, those long, uh, uh, those herbs, plants, water plants. You have fungs, you have mulch, you have a rat there also, okay. So, these images appeal to our five senses, even to the senses of the poet. They are there. Then, if you see wells as symbol, so very simple, well is the symbol of life, excitement, knowledge and inspiration. Okay? And the darkness in the well, in the very first uh, two lines, rather in the first quatrain, it, it, this, this, by the way this poem has five quatrains, right, of four lines each. So, darkness in the well symbolizes the mysteries of life and, uh, uh, and death, right. So, water weeds, fungs, mulch, foxgloves and windlasses, they are all images taken from uh, the nature, they actually describe or uh, present the innocence of the child, his sensation and his conscience, his awareness towards the world, right. If you see the style used by the poet in this very poem, so what is the style? The poem consists of five quatrains, I told you just a bit, uh, just a few moments before and in each line there are at least ten syllables, right, in per line, right, okay, not so strict, but mostly they are there. And there is a rough rhyme scheme in this very poem. For example, if you go to wells, wind lasses, then smells and moss. So, we can say wells uh, rhymes with smells and lasses smell uh, rhymes with uh, moss, right. So, that way we can say there is a kind of this rhyme scheme that is A, B, A, B. So, in the next stanza uh, it will be C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, H, G, H, I, G, H, like that, okay. And then uh, there are some, there is, uh, this poem is full of alliteration, for example, this is full of assonance. Uh, for example, if you take this uh, uh, in, the, in, in the third line, I loud the dark drop, right, dark drop, right. So, the sound dark and the uh, drop, another the. So, the and the repeated here, so that creates a kind of music, so that is alliteration, right. Then assonance in this very poem, for example, if you take the words like for example, pumps, buckets, pa, ba, right, a sound is uh, repeated here, fangs, fa, ba, bucket again, plummeted, plum again. So, a sound is repeated frequently in these very words. For example, if you go drop, draw, moss, if you go howard, if you go bottom, bo, and uh, bo bottom and uh, sorry, bottom, hover and moss, drop again, oh, sound is repeated and in the words like rope in the line is so and no, so o, o, o is repeated and in the words like in, brickyard, e sound is repeated, e and b and then in rich, e again, then in spring, e again, is, e again, dignity, e again, so then you have, uh, these are the examples of assonance, right. Now, what is uh, again Greek mythology that has been used in this very poem, for example, Helicon I said in the beginning, right, is the name of mountain where nine muses live, Narcissus is the Greek uh, uh, mythological character, extremely handsome, but disdainful young man who fell in love with himself, his reflection in a pool and committed suicide near one of the fountains, right. Then echo, uh, for example, it is believed that echo simply means when your voice comes back, but in this very poem, echo has its own uh, connotation. Echo is actually in Greek legends again, it is believed that she was a beautiful madam, right, and Narcissus had fallen in love with her, fallen in love with, uh, in, in, in love with her, but uh, you know, a famous uh, thing that Narcissus, that madam had fallen in love with Narcissus, but Narcissus had a problem that he was in love with himself. So, they could not meet, right, and he committed suicide, you know, that I, that I told you. And finally, if you come to the conclusion of this very poem, what will you see? Is a poem, is an own inspiration, the mysteries, the experiences of life that are being projected. The final stanza strongly implies that where before the poet was able to enjoy think and reflect on life and himself through playing with wells, he now having grown out of it, out of this does so through rhyme, through writing poetry, right. 
Now, this is quickly I tried my level best to give you the explanation of this very poem, right? And I presented some of the poetic devices, symbols, particularly assonance, alliteration, and imagery present in the poem, right? So, I tried to stay very much focused on this very uh, area stop bad uh, fit right and when you understand all these things right then you will be able to comprehend the poem for example there is uh, one of the best uh, i have seen uh, uh, passages uh, uh, one of the summarized part of this very poem let us try to read that out you yourself now I will not uh, tell you somewhere most probably I may help, but I think that you will be able to do it yourself, right. For example, if you complete try to complete this, the poet as a child was dashed by wells, yes, he was fascinated by wells and dashed with buckets and falling off buckets and winds. He loved the dark depths, the dashed sky, the trapped yes the trapped sky and dash and the dash of weeds and the yes and the filling and the uh, life that was of weed in the uh, in this very uh, in the well sorry and the weeds uh, and the weed is in the uh, wells okay he remembers a well in brickyard yes and the boat top had dash had what had happened to the boat top? You uh, read it right now. That was torn, that was broken. Okay. The poet enjoyed the dash of the bucket, the fall of the bucket. The poet enjoyed the fall of the bucket. Okay. Uh, it crashed down into the well at, at, the, uh, at the end of the rope. A shallow well under a dry stone ditch was dash as an aquarium, was full of life, right? Was fat fight the point of the word that you have in the poem as an aquarium. When the poet pulled out weeds from the soft mulch, he could see, yes. What did he see? In the water, he could see his own reflection in the water, right, absolutely. Then sometimes the poet would call out to hear the echo of his own voice. Once a rat across, uh, ran across his reflection and dashed him. What happened once? When a rat? Uh, when, a, when a rat ran across his reflection, what happened? He got scared and scared him, right? But now, the poet has moved away from the poetry he wrote when he uh, was younger to a more mature kind. He no longer sees, looks into the wells. Now, he is not looking into the wells, but writes poetry that makes the darkness echoing. That makes the darkness echoing. That means now, he is a mature poet and he is now writing poetry. In his childhood, he was keeping himself busy with what? With wells, as you are doing, right? Today, in the COVID times, I advise you, do not go outside. You know, it is very dangerous. Everywhere you know that we are in the middle of a pandemic. It is very important for you and me to stay back. That is why I am here today in this studio, right away coming to your home, right, teaching you there. So, stay back, stay safe, maintain proper distance, use masks whenever, if it needs arises, you go out, use proper mask and then only go out, right. And never sit in these uh, uh, crowds, please, and avoid playing in playgrounds. I have seen most of the students, you go out, start playing in grounds. No, see, this is not the normal time idea students. This is not the normal time. Very, very dangerous. It can be a terrible problem for your, especially your old parents at home. So, you have to be very careful, right? So, take all these notes down. I hope during my lecture, you might have taken all the notes. Take them, read this poem again. In case there is any problem, you can reach me, you know, all my contacts and all that. You can come back to me. We are there always to help you. Wish you all the good luck. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much.